Amen. You may be seated. Hey guys, uh, with us, uh, we, uh, we have the honor to have uh, Pastor Hang with us this morning. Um, all I know is he's, he lived in Indonesia for 10, 10 years before. Uh, he was a missionary in Indonesia for 10 years. He's, uh, he's from Netherlands. So uh, I'm going to let him introduce himself. He, he's, he's probably going to do a lot better than me. So let's give a warm welcome to Pastor Hang. Well, good morning. Thank you for the privilege of sharing the Word of God with you. It's a joy to be here. Um, actually, the uh, link between us and you is uh, Pastor Victor from uh, Holland. Uh, you know Pastor Victor, don't you? He's been here many times, I guess. And uh, so we are in close fellowship. Uh, we minister in each other's places. and. Uh, we are frequently on the phone, and so it's a joy to be here and meet you all. Uh, this is our first time in Philadelphia, and uh, so always ready to share something of the riches of the Word. It will be a joy to open our Bibles together. So as you heard, um, uh, we were missionaries in Indonesia. And uh, that was also a long time ago when we, I was still young. Uh, moved there uh, late 72, I guess it was. And uh, we stayed there until 1983, but have been back quite often. Actually, this year I already have been back there for three times. So, and, uh, But we are happy and thankful to be able to minister and pastor a church in uh, the eastern part of Holland. And um, we have quite some Indonesians in our church as well. So uh, we never uh, lose our opportunities to speak and eat Indonesian. So uh, that's also good. My wife is from Indonesia as well. She was born there and raised in Holland. And with me is my son-in-law. His uh, wife was also born in Indonesia while we were missionaries there. And so uh, uh, Michel is our assistant pastor and he's uh, being groomed to uh, succeed us when we will have our uh, retirement age, which will be coming up soon. So uh, I want Michel to uh, just give you greetings too. So good morning. morning. How are you all doing? Good. Yeah, good. Well, you guys really remind me of uh, JC Generation from Delft, Holland. Pastor Victor's church. He has a like a like a youth group. Same atmosphere, the same same people, Indonesian. So um, it's it's good to be here. I've, I've speak there often at JC Generation. So. Um, it feels like coming home and I feel at home here. So good to see you. Um, my name is Michelle. That's not a girl's name. <laughs> yeah. So it's French. It's actually a, in French. It's a boy's name. But here, I don't know what they made up of Michelle here in America. But all girls are here called Michelle. So it's not a girl's name. Remember that. <laughs> well, um, the, the other thing I would like to share a little bit is that I got saved 20 years ago, a long time ago already. But I remember when I was, I was 20 back then, I was, I was in college. And um, I remember that I got saved actually in a prison cell when I, um, when I got arrested by the police. And there was this um, nightclub DJ where I worked who told me about Jesus crazy story I won't bother you with that story but um, what I really uh, felt that um, when I got saved I got so in love with Jesus and um, my parents didn't raise me up as a Christian so I I was the only Christian in the house so there was no one there who would support me who would help me or would encourage me in the Lord I had to encourage myself in the Lord but this is what I just want to give to you because I realized that um, like high school and college can be really a jungle out there 
And you know what I'm talking about, right? So if you come here on a Sunday or whenever you feel like safe, it's like coming home. But if you're there, back there in your, in your high school, on, 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 in college, it can be really a jungle. It's, it's, it's tough. But I, what I just want to give to you is that what the Lord said to, jo to Joshua. He said to Joshua, be strong and courageous. He said, do not fear. And why could he say that? Because he said, I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. So that's the, that's the beauty. You can be in the jungle. You can be out there. Maybe having a tough time with your peers. But you have to realize that God is with you. I mean, the almighty God who created heaven and earth. I mean, he's, he's, he's your father. He's, he has unlimited power. And he is with you. So that's, that's very encouraging, right? So you never have to feel like, oh, well, poor me. I'm, well, you know, I'm, 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 I'm here. I'm a Christian. I, I don't, I'm afraid to tell my, uh, my students I'm a Christian. No, you, we can be really proud in a good sense that we are a child of God because he is with us. So be strong and be courageous and do not fear. Amen. Hallelujah. So it is a joy to um, know the Lord and serve him and uh, to realize that he is ever, ever faithful. Amen. Thank you, Michelle, for your testimony. Uh, we have some time uh, for the word of God, and uh, I just want to uh, spend some time in the word with you. When we were in the plane, I watched the movie, and it says this uh, plane is an adaptation for blip. So just to fit in the little screen and to fit in the um, public of uh, the airplane. So now what I'm sharing this morning is also an adaptation and uh, just some few, a few points that I want to uh, leave with you. Because this morning I'd like to share something about a lady in the Bible. Uh, we have quite some ladies here, and uh, that's good to have ladies here. But, uh, man, you have to realize you are also the bride of Christ. So, uh, in that sense, like Michelle said, here it's a girl's name. Well, man, I'm happy to tell you, you are called a bride. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> and so, uh, we can learn from this woman that I'm going to read something about. We can learn from her life, although she was a person living in the Old Testament days. And I'd like to take you to uh, 1 Kings chapter 4. And even her name, the name of the lady, is not uh, mentioned here. Just the place where she used to live. So this morning you could be called a Philadelphian or whatever. And, uh, but this lady was called Shunammite. You ever heard of the Shunammite lady, Shunammite woman, uh, the woman from Shunem? Let's just read in uh, 2 Kings chapter 4. One day Elisha went to Shunem. And a well-to-do woman was there who urged him to stay for a meal. So whenever she came, he came by, he stopped there to eat. She said to her husband, I know that this man who often comes our way is a holy man of God. Let's make a small room and a roof and put in it a bed and a table, a chair and a lamp for him. Then he can stay there whenever he comes to us. One day when Elisha came, he went up to the room and lay down, and lay down there. He said to his servant, Gehazi, whatever you call it in English, call the Shunammite. So he called her and he stood before, she stood before him. Elisha said to him, tell her, you have gone to all this trouble for us. Now what can be done for you? Can we speak on your behalf to the king or the commander of the army? She replied, I have a home among my own people. What can be done for her, Elisha asked. Gehazi said, 
Well, she has no son, and her husband, husband is old. Then Elijah said, Call her. So he called her, and she stood in the doorway. About this time next year, Elisha said, You will hold a son in your arms. No, my lord, she objected. Don't mislead your servant, O man of God. But the woman became pregnant, and the next year, about that same time, she gave birth to a son, just as Elisha had told her. And when you know the story, you will also know that actually when this boy grew up, it came to a point that as he was in the fields harvesting uh, the harvest, he became ill and he died right there. And so for this Shunammite woman, it was a terrible disappointment. But at the time when her son died, she put him uh, in the upper room she had prepared for the prophet. And then she ran off to meet the prophet and ask for his help. And then the prophet actually came, to make a long story short, and he prayed and he bowed over this young man and he was restored to life. So there are some secrets in the life of the Shunammite woman I want to share with you. She was a lady and she was called well-to-do. She was a prosperous woman. Would you like to prosper in life? Would you like to prosper in life? Yes, we would. But our true prosperity is not in silver or gold. But our true prosperity is in a relationship with God. Amen? Amen. Because he is the source of our sufficiency. And it has been mentioned in the word of God that my God will supply all your needs according to his riches. So I am a joint heir of the riches. Beautiful. You know, it says we uh, will be provided according to his riches. Amen. It doesn't say out of his riches, but according to his riches. That's proportionate. You realize that? Because when you meet a millionaire, um, yeah, it's, it's English, yeah, million, sometimes I get confused with all these languages. But uh, when you uh, meet a millionaire, when he um, lavishes you with gifts according to his riches, it's quite different than when he blesses you out of his riches because he could give you a dime out of his riches. But that wouldn't mean according to his riches because when you meet a millionaire and he, he blesses you out of his riches, he could give you anything. But when he blesses you according to his riches, it is a, it is a wonderful blessing. So God has promised that he would bless us according to to his riches. So when we are in relationship with him, that is what I call true prosperity. Amen. True prosperity. And so this woman was a prosperous woman and I want just to, um, to, to catch and, and, and see some principles in her life uh, that could also be valuable to you and me and will be valuable. The first thing that I just realized when I read about this woman, she was a woman that honored the word of God. She honored the word of God. Heaven and earth may pass away, but the word of God will always remain. So when you honor the word of God, that is the first and most important step towards a prosperous Christian life. She honored the word of God because there was a prophet called uh, Elisha and he would pass her house all the time and she would always provide a meal for him. In that sense, she could be Indonesian because Indonesians always say, Sudamakan, have you already eaten? 
And if you haven't, okay, then there's a meal for you. So um, maybe she was Indonesian. I don't think so, but anyway. So, but the principle is for whoever. And so she invited the prophet, and then she always said, she, she said as well, let us just build a room for him so that whenever he passes by, he can stay here, he can rest here because she honored the man of God. She honored the word of God. She honored the prophet. She honored prophecy. But I want to tell you, never become a prophecy hunter. Because I don't know whether we have them here, but it's always so easy to become a prophecy hunter. It's like going to this machine. If you want, uh, if you want a drink, you just put your money in there, and it says clunk, and then you have your can of of, uh, of whatever you need and whatever you want. And, but God is not like that, and prophecy is not like that. When she invited the man of God into her house, she just um, showed that she valued the word of God. She valued the carrier of the word of God. And I just want to tell you, most of you here are young. And we all are young, aren't we? We feel young, don't we? So, uh, but it's so important. This is the most important foundation in your life. Honor the word of God. Always be obedient to the word of God because things may come and go, but the word of God remains forever. Hallelujah. And we are so stupid that sometimes we think we know better. Because when God sends his word, we often debate. And we, you know, we have our opinions and we have our thoughts. But honor the word of God and you will be prosperous. Because the word of God is true riches. So that's one thing. The second thing I want to uh, just mention is uh, attract the blessing of God. Attract the blessing of God. She was a woman that attracted the blessing of God. Now, how can we attract the blessing of God? Because we know blessing is because of God's grace only. We can't earn blessings. We can't deserve blessings. But we can attract blessings. And how can we attract blessings? It says in the Bible, it's a very well-known scripture... Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added unto you. It says in Dutch, they will be thrown towards you. Isn't that wonderful? When things are thrown towards you, it hits your heart and you just have to catch them. And this was a woman that attracted the blessing of God. And another thing is, she attracted the blessing of God. It says in Matthew 10, 42, there's no time to read it, but you jot it down. Matthew 10, 42, it says, when you receive a righteous person, you will receive the reward of the righteous. When you receive a prophet you will receive the reward of the prophet. So it is a, a, a thing you do by which you attract the blessing of God. We have a special room in our house for ministers. And we have received many ministers down through the years, just like this woman here has done it. And I can tell you, God has richly blessed us by receiving prophets and righteous people and receiving the ministry of God. So attract the blessing of God. Always be in the place where God can throw his blessings towards you. My third point is this, be content. When she was asked, what can I do for you? She just said, I'm rich. She didn't use those words, but she was just content. 
She was content. She says, I am rich because I am surrounded by blessing. This is my paraphrase. I'm surrounded by blessings. I've got all these things and oh, I'm just such a blessed person. We have a little tile on our um, wall in our hallway when you enter our house. It says, count what you have and not what you miss. And so this woman was content because she counted what she had. And it's very easy, even for a Christian, to become discontented. You can become discontented because you focus on things you don't have and other people may have. But never compare yourself to others. Be happy with what God has given you. Because if you would have needed more, he would have given you more. And he may give you more in due season. But be content with what you have. Because a discontented Christian is a burden to his surroundings. We are called to be a blessing, aren't we? So be content. It says, and it's a very important verse, and I just want to read it, and sorry we're going through this quite, um, you know, quickly, but um, you just hopefully will take time to uh, meditate on these principles. It says in 1 Timothy chapter 6, 1 Timothy chapter 6, it says in verse 5 and 6, where are we now? Hmm. Yeah, six. Um, but godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world and we can take nothing out of it. That's verse six and verse seven. So there is contentment. This woman never had a baby. Her husband was old, it says. She never had a baby, but she was so blessed with what God had given her. And she boasted in the blessing. She says, I have my family here. I have everything I need. When she was asked, what can I do for you? She said, I am content. Hallelujah. And this is um, so important that whenever you pray, whatever you do, that you are a grateful person because gratitude is the key of prosperity, a key to prosperity. Thankful for what you have. Are you thankful people? Yes. Hallelujah. Because that brings great contentment. This was a woman that was a godly woman and also a contented woman. No, time is running out. Um, Fourthly, it, you have to realize that you are not above <coughs> disappointment and hurt and pain. So the, I could go on a little more like you said. Huh? Yeah, 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 okay, yeah. yeah. So, uh, but anyway, it's good to be reminded. But um, you have to realize Although you are a Christian, although you are a blessed person, you are not above disappointment and pain and hurt. But even in the disappointments, even in the pain, even in the hurts that you go through, know that God is faithful. This woman, it's a long, long story, and it even continues in chapter 8, that how this woman became a testimony to others. But you can see here that her child, her God-given child, the supernatural child that was entrusted to her because her husband was already old, the child that was given to her actually died. And what a disappointment. But this did not defeat her. Are there any persons here that have ever been disappointed? You know, sometimes I meet church people and members in our church that say, oh, I'm so heard by other people. 
And then I do usually tell them, well, join the club. <laughs> because we all have our disappointments. But hallelujah, when we focus on God, he will be faithful. And when this child died, what did she do? She took the dead body of her sweet boy. She took the dead body and put it on the bed where the prophet had prophesied to her. Because when she came to his room, and when she was called in, and he started prophesying over her, she brought her dead son, her disappointment, her most painful experience, she brought, brought it right back where it all started, in the presence of the Lord, where the word of God had gone forth. She put him there, and then without stopping in her way, she went back to her uh, to, uh, she went to the prophet you just read it and when she was asked how are you doing she said everything is alright that's awful when you just have a dead son there how can you say everything is alright because she had learned God is in control hallelujah it is well with my soul it is well with my soul. And whatever you go through, just remember, if you are in fellowship with God, if you honor the word of God, if you know how to attract the blessing of God, you can always say, whatever I go through, it is well with my soul. Have you ever sung that song? Ever sung it? You know who wrote it? It was a lawyer. And he lived in Chicago. And... Um, his name is Horatio Spafford. He was a lawyer, and he was a true Christian. What happened to this man? He was blessed with a family. He had like five children. And then, um, like it was in 1871, his son died. His son, his only son. And then, uh, the year after, there was an enormous fire in Chicago, and he lost his possessions in the fire. And then he was a true friend of D. L. Moody, and D. L. Moody was evangelizing in, in England at the time. So he went to England with his wife and his four daughters, and he went there to support Moody in the ministry. He was a true supporter of the ministry and then because he was busy in his law firm he sent his wife and daughters on to England and he would come later and then all of a sudden he heard that a ship had collided with the ship his wife and daughters were in uh, were on and he received a telegram um, I am the only one that was saved that's his wife so his four daughters died in the collision of the ships just imagine and you know it's terrible if you go through that first your son dies and then four children die so you're childless at the time five children gone and it was a terrible experience but then God gave him a song and the song is it is well with my soul when sea billow when, when sorrows like sea billows roll it is well with my soul and you know the tune to the song was named after the ship that collided with the ship his wife and children were on but he could say it is well with my soul and then after that he had another son and this, that son also died when it was four years old terrible he still had two daughters later and then they went to uh, to Israel to be uh, missionaries there but the church didn't understand him and they said well probably this is a um, uh, this is um, God punishing him because he goes through so much troubles but this man said it is well with my soul hallelujah this is what the woman said everything all right dead son and yet she could say, everything is all right. And just learn to praise the Lord in the midst of your troubles.
because that will carry you through to victory. Hallelujah. So I pray that you and I will always be prosperous people in God. Amen? Amen. That we will be just like this woman, well-to-do, because we have a God who provides us with everything. Amen? Amen? Let's just pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for the word that you have given us. And Lord, we want to be people of substance. We want to be prosperous people in you, Lord. We want to be rich in eternal riches. And Father, whatever we go through in life, Lord, we don't know what's around the corner for us, but we know you are there. We know that you rule and reign. We know that you will give us everything we need and you will always be us, be with us because you will never leave us or forsake us. And I pray, Father, for these young people that are here and for all of us that still feel young because we experience your presence. Father, I pray that we will follow these principles, that we will always be people that honor your word, that honor the ministry of the word, that value the fellowship of the saints. Father, we pray that we will always be people that attract your blessing. And whatever we go through, we will be able to say, everything is all right because God is in control. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen.